All right, I'm pretty excited today. We are gonna do something totally different than what we've done in the past here on this channel. We're gonna go off-site and visit a couple of my friends and learn all about grafting avocado trees, exactly how to do it so that we can grow more fruit trees. And I got an announcement that I'm gonna share at the end of this video about a super cool event that we're planning. You're not gonna to wanna to miss that. But for now, I'm gonna grab a couple avocado root stalks, hop in the car and take the drive up the coast to visit my buddy at his farm and grab some avocado trees. Hey guys, this is my buddy Anthony, and he's gonna show us how to graft avocados today. We're super stoked to have him. He has been working with uh, Grow Paradise. Yeah. And he's been uh, showing people all around the island how to graft and how to grow more fruit trees. And so today, we have his knowledge, his expertise, and he's gonna share with us how to do it. So let's join along. Right on. What's up guys, we're gonna be grafting avocados today, and uh, a lot of important things. You wanna have a good root stock, so you wanna use a good mix of potting soil, black cinder for drainage, uh, compost, and put it in a decent sized bag so the roots can really fill it out nice. You're gonna, you're gonna wanna put some agricultural tape, a half inch is best, so you can give it a really good squeeze once you slide it in. And then we're gonna use our parafilm, which is grafting tape, to wrap our scion. So this is the, the scion, S-C-I-O-N. It's what we will attach to the rootstock, which is technically a seedling. So the scion is from the tree that we want to copy. This is from a Malama avocado. An ideal one is something like this. It's, it's still clean, it's got a lot of good buds, you know. Compare that one to this one. You'll see a lot of this. These rarely ever take. It's always something like this that takes. It's younger, there isn't any buildup on the, on the skin. So what I've learned is it's good to just snap these leaves off because if I were to cut it, there'd be a little bit material right in here that would start to decay and then it would spread to the rest of the, uh, the scion. So I just gently break that leaf off, just like that. And then what's good is just to give it a haircut right on top. And then our buds are gonna come from here. You want the buds to be present, but not overly big. You don't want them to have already pushed out, just that they're there and they're ready to push. Is there a certain time of year that we'd want to be doing this grafting? Any time except the flowering season um, for avocados. So usually when they're flowering, all of these are going to be pushing out flowers instead of leaves or branches. So that's the one time when you don't really see it. But then on one tree, it might be flowering on the south side and then on the north side in the shade, it hasn't flowered yet. So it's always good to walk around the tree. And another important thing, usually if you can go a little bit higher and get some scions that are exposed to the sunshine, they're usually going to take a lot better. They've got a lot of solar energy already in them and when you attach them they've got a lot of life and they usually take and now we're here at a certain time of day what's the reason of that oh uh, the time of day is high tide you want to harvest your scions at high tide uh, high tide because all the energy is going up into the plant into the tips of the plant and then also we're doing it right around the full moon and also the ascending moon so with the biodynamic calendar they're really all about the ascending and descending moon so you want to look for the ascending moon and that's a good time to graft and you usually want to graft around the full moon and luckily now uh, both times coincide so it's a really good time to graft perfect all right let's dive into one huh usually about six inches of parafilm is is good and then I always like to wrap them pointing towards me. So the tip of the scion is going to be pointed towards my belly button. I usually leave one inch exposed because that's what we're going to be carving with our knives anyways. So then since I'm right-handed, I use my, use my left hand to just pinch everything. And then I just take my right thumb and just gently stretch it. And it sticks to itself, with, but it's not sticky per se, but it'll cling to itself, sort of like saran wrap. And then I just gently rotate it with my left hand Oops, and then once in a while, if I pull a little too hard, it'll break, but that's okay. I just start over. Just like that. And you wanna go all the way to the top. And then if, like right here, there's a little bit left, that's okay. I just get about one inch. And then I just cover the top up. 
and just make a little thing like that, that's fine. And then what's important with avocados is to make a little slit above each bud for it to push through. Otherwise, some can push through, but avocados seem to get uh, stifled and they just don't want to go. So just a little incision is enough. And then we're going to start carving down in this area. We're looking for something that matches the diameter. So right around here, this looks pretty good. A little different down here. So we can even start carving right in this area. So we're going to do what's known as a whip graft. It's a long diagonal cut. If you're familiar with a planted Hawaii, that's normally the style of graft that they use. So it's just a really long diagonal from about here to here, which is about two inches. You can even go one inch, but I like to go usually two. And then this is a grafting knife with a flat edge. So that's pretty good. And go a little bit tighter up here. And then I just hold it to where it looks good. And then I know I'm going to start my carve right around up here. And then just try and make it about the same length, about two inches. Okay. And ideally, you don't have to wear gloves, but you don't want to be touching the plant material. So then we're just going to line it up so it looks pretty good. Go a little bit higher. And all you need is for one side to match up. Both sides don't need to touch. So as long as one cell of the cambium layer matches up, you're going to be good. So I'm just going to extend Can it. Can you show off the cambium layer? Yep. Just this bright green line right here would be the cambium. And then the cambium of this. Right there. So with avocados, it's usually right near, it is right near the center, bright green line. So we want this to meet up with that. All right. And then I'll just line it up. Even if we've got a couple gaps, that's okay, because the ag tape's going to squeeze everything together. And then this is where the ag tape comes into play. I just slide it up, and it becomes uh, a third hand, if you will, to squeeze everything together. I just give it a, it's like a placeholder. And then it gives me a chance to wrap everything nice. So this is one inch ag tape. It's a little bit thicker, obviously, than the half inch, but it still works. And we just give everything a nice, good squeeze. That compression really helps the cells connect. Before I was just using the parafilm by itself, the grafting tape, and it wouldn't give that really good squeeze that we were looking for. So. So it still looks a little clumsy, and then we're just going to line it up and then finish it with the grafting tape. Right there, right there. Okay. And then I've learned to start from the bottom up, because as you go higher, it covers itself so rain doesn't catch so much in the grooves. Although that being said, we make a little incision for the buds, but it doesn't seem to impede the take it'll still take okay so don't be afraid to go heavy on it I just give it a little stretch and wrap stretch and wrap Everything's sealed up nice okay so this is a malama you really want to make sure you label it because once you do a bunch you never know. Sometimes you're going to look two months later and be like, what was that? What? So many different things. So it's always good to label it, even if you just write the letter M or something so you personally know what it is. And then another important thing is uh, avocados can take full sun when they've been grafted, but stuff like durian needs to be in full shade. And then you always want to discourage the little buds that are going to come back from the rootstock because they're going to want to compete with this and they're going to challenge it. So if too much growth is happening down here, that's not going to take. So after the first week, you just kind of brush everything, come back a week later, brush it off again, and then it's going to direct all the healing into the scion. Keeping the soil wet and watered just like we would any other 
potted plant? A good rule of thumb is to give it a week without watering, and then at that point, um, you can give it water every you know few days or something. Because we're taking the tops off, there's no leaves up here like there were, so it's not sucking up as much water anyways. But um, just to give it a little bit of rest time, and they say the scion will heal quicker if you don't water it right away. So usually about a week is a good rule of thumb. Yeah, and then just you know protect it from you know birds landing on it or bumping into it, and then just gradually keep moving it out to get more sun. And then within about two months, you can cut off the ag tape. And then the parafilm will just sort of wither away. It's no big deal. And, and then another important thing is sometimes you'll see three or four buds come out. Eventually you want to let just one come out. So we'll knock off the other ones and let that be the leader. And then that will send off other buds instead of it forking off. Uh, we did a macadamia class and they, were, they said that was really important. Just let one be the leader and then you'll be set. Well, Shoots Anthony, thanks for showing us how to graft avocados. Uh, hopefully everyone learned how to do it from this short, simple video. So let's get to it. Let's plant tons of trees. Let's get everyone on the islands growing food. Because why wouldn't you want more food growing, right? All right. We love avocados. We yeah. love avocados. Yeah, I can't have enough. Well, shoots everybody. That was super fun grafting with my buddy Anthony with Grow Paradise up there in the Hamakua Coast. It certainly is nice to get a different change of view every now and then. And that brings me to the announcement that I mentioned I was going to make earlier. A few of us have been planning a big event that we hope to have happen in the spring, might have to happen in the fall, but we're calling it a fruit tree for every yard. And the goal is to get a fruit tree in every yard here in Hawaii. The idea is to build a food resilience and to have a stewardship over plants distributed over a huge network so that all of us can have access to easy growing food and to begin to be able to share that food with our neighbors. But we need you. We need an army of fruit tree growers to make this vision a reality. We're raising funds to purchase some trees, but we need more to make Hawaii resilient. And this video is one of the tools to make that happen. You learn how to graft avocado trees. In earlier videos, I taught you how to air layer ulu trees, and we'll go over more propagation techniques in future videos, but just start planting. Get some pots, get some potting soil, plant some seeds in that soil, and start growing trees. In a year or two, we'll have plenty of trees to start sharing and be able to make this idea fruitful. Let's do it together. Let's grow more food and let's make Hawaii more resilient to future pandemics and less reliant on offshore imports. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Aloha.